The title of the sermon today is What Scares Us? Tomorrow's Halloween or All Hallows Eve, the day before All Saints Day where the veil is particularly thin, <clears throat> and it seemed appropriate to talk about the things that scare us. But also in the spirit of trick-or-treat and play, I have written several things that might scare you and hidden them under your seats. <laughs> so if you check under your seats, and if you have one of those cards, I invite you to raise it up and I'll call on you to call out the words. You should just be able to feel it. All right. What do we have here? Small spaces, claustrophobia. No toilet paper. Heights, spiders. What else do we have? Any others that we found? Maybe public speaking? What's that one? Crowds, yes. Germs. Snakes for me, I can't handle snakes. Ghosts. Are there any others that you can think of? Clowns. <laughs> For some people, yes. The dark, yes. Maybe the news. Elections. War. Mondays, yeah. Well, Reverend David and I have been spending a lot of time sitting around in the office talking about the impending doom that we feel from the news. We get paid to do that. And there's plenty to scare us on the news, but neither of us want to live in fear, and we don't want you all to live in fear either. So we organized the Dinner for the Ministers, which was a huge success on Thursday, out of the sense that folks needed to gather and spend some time focusing on the present moment, the here and now. We even did a ritual of letting go of stones in water, symbolizing something we were ready to lay down, even in part. And many folks decided to lay down some of their fear and overwhelm about the future. But what I wanna talk about today is leaning into some of our fears with courage. What if we started from the concept of doing one thing every day that scares you. That quote is often misattributed to Eleanor Roosevelt, although she said something very similar. When I was in middle and high school, there was a song on the radio popular by Baz Luhrmann called Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen. It quoted a column word for word by American journalist Mary Schmitch, and it's a series of pieces of advice that she considered she might give as a commencement speech. She wrote, don't worry about the future or worry, but know that worrying is as effective as trying to solve an algebra equation by chewing bubble gum. The real troubles in your life are apt to be things that never crossed your worried mind the kind that blindside you at 4 p.m. on some idle Tuesday. Do one thing every day that scares you. Sing. Don't be reckless with other people's hearts. Don't put up with people who are reckless with yours. Floss. Don't waste time on jealousy. Sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind. The race is long, and in the end, it's only with yourself. She go, keeps going and the song keeps going as well. Do any of you remember that from 1998? Yeah, Karen does, a couple of you, yeah. It was a hit. Now, Eleanor Roosevelt did also say something about courage in the face of fear. She said, 
You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You're able to say to yourself, I have lived through this horror. I can take the next thing that comes along. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. We often use fear and anxiety interchangeably as words, but they are not the same. Fear is one of those seven core emotions that have been identified by professionals. It's a biological and evolutionary purpose of core emotions. They're, the purpose, such as fear, is to help us survive. Fear helps us flee from the saber-toothed tiger behind us. Anxiety, on the other hand, evolved out of that fear. It's an emotion that results from avoiding core emotions and needs. So anxiety is the physical effort to push down emotions. If we know we are not being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, yet are experiencing something similar to fear, we can assume we're experiencing anxiety. Core emotions like fear calm down when they're fully, safely in the body. Once we no longer feel threatened or in danger, it often helps when you practice deep belly breathing, plus a mindful, curious, and compassionate stance. We can follow the sensations of fear in the body, like trembling, until they release or dissipate. And anxiety, on the other hand, needs to be calmed down, not only to feel better, but to help us get in touch with the core emotions that underlie it. We must face our fears in order to calm them. We cannot simply push them away. To go back to the title of the sermon, I don't think it's meant so much as a question, but as the beginning of a statement. What scares us compels us to pay attention. What scares us is information. What scares us is an opportunity. What scares us shows us our comfort zone. What scares us helps us realize our place and purpose in the world. When we are afraid or even anxious, we must remember that we are not alone in those feelings. Fear and anxiety are human emotions and reactions. It's an opportunity for us to come together and remember our interconnectedness. When I am frightened, will you reassure me when I'm uncertain, will you hold my hand? Will you be strong for me? Sing to me quietly. Will you share some of your stories with me? There's a note about the song in the UUA song information page that was compelling to me. When I am frightened is also titled, Then I May Learn. It was commissioned in 1999 by the First Unitarian Church of Dallas for their hymnal supplement and was published for their centennial celebration. Because of the author's lifelong commitment to working with and empowering youth, Shelley took the opportunity to write a piece based on children's yearning for truth, respect, and engagement with adults. In keeping with the philosophy that children are watching, what are they learning? Then I May Learn is meant as a reminder that all children deserve and need compassion, acceptance, and commitment, and that they often learn to both give and receive these essential elements of relationship through the simple act of observation. We are all children of the divine who deserve and need compassion, acceptance, and commitment, learning our way without any roadmaps, just by observation of one another. 
what scares us calls us to be with one another, to learn the meaning of unity and beloved community. What scares us can lead us to anxiety if we attempt to push it away. But if we lean into it and look at it in the face together, sometimes we can make a change. Sometimes we can reframe the fear into an opportunity. Sometimes we can do the thing we think we cannot do, the thing that scares us, the thing right outside of our comfort zone. I invite you to breathe deeply with me. Let's practice that belly breath. Spirit of life and love, we long to feel your presence in the midst of fear and anxiety. Help us to feel equipped to face that which scares us and act with courage. Show us our strength and power when we come together and support one another. Give us the endurance to keep going. Filled by your holy breath, surrounded by your unending love, we pray. Amen. <laughs>